This special video presentation of what women and other wonderful humans want is presented by Dating Kinky, built by kinksters for kinksters, poly, queer, trans folk, and anyone not quite vanilla. And it's free. In its fourth season of presenting personalities as their authentic selves, this is What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want, presented by Dating Kinky, the official podcast of FetishCon. It's an intimate conversation with people inside the kink and fetish worlds, as well as other educators and sex-positive personalities sharing their stories of what makes them who they are. And now, here is your host, John, or as they are known in the kink and fetish communities. Hi there, Catsuit. It's Sunday of FetishCon, and it has been absolutely overwhelming seeing all the different people here. And one of the people I really wanted to run into is photographer Scott Church, who has taken the most amazing photographs of models, whether they be fetish models or regular models, the fact is you capture images that bring out the authenticity in every image you do. The, the, the thing about compliments, when we're talking about work, especially mm -hmm. work, like, like, all right, thank you, first of <laughs> all. Thank you, first of all, let me clarify. But it's always funny to me because to me it's like you're telling me that I that I I'm really great at you know putting on my shoes <laughs> because it's what you do right because it's what I do and it's what I do without any kind of thought anymore without any sort of process to it it's like this is just perfect mm -hmm. you know and and I've been doing it for so long and I've I've loved this job and this life for so long that I, I feel like a goof accepting praise for it because <laughs> I'm so fucking lucky just to be able to still mm -hmm. be doing it. When did you start your love and have it be as easy as putting on a shoe? All right. Photography is one of those wonderful things that you get better at the more that you do it if you're mm -hmm. doing it right. If you're doing it right, you should be constantly learning. You should be constantly trying to outdo yourself. It's mm -hmm. never a competition thing. Art in general is never a competition thing. But God damn it, if you ain't first, you're last. Now, sorry, snapped into my... That's okay. Anyway. <laughs> The, 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 the point of creating, the point of doing the kind of things that we're doing is, is for me especially, I'm just trying to get better and better and better at what I do. And because of that, I don't, I don't really put a line on, like, the, there was never, like, the good time. There was, mm -hmm. there's, like, there's, like, the time where I'm getting through this or the time where I'm getting through this or... And, and I feel like I'm really only now, 30 years in, good at what I do, mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't believe that I was good at what I did before. I didn't believe that, what I was, that I was good at what I did in the middle. But I feel like now, because it feels like just putting on my shoes, mm -hmm. that that means I'm finally really good at it. I can only relate to your process because my son is a photographer hmm. who started out simply taking pictures of a football game at his high school right and then he turned the camera around and starting take to take pictures of the fans and the emotions that came from that yeah which helped him with the emotions of football which ended up in his sophomore year He's working for Major League Baseball. See? And, but, I, but I bet in his head, it was a completely natural process. And these are the steps to go through to get to where he wanted to be. And now he's going forward from him. From him. The mm -hmm. hardest part is recognizing when you have that success. Mm -hmm. The hardest part of all of it is, is, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. Because people, especially people with creative minds, 
don't rest on that. True. You know, it, we, we don't allow ourselves the luxury of being able to say, yeah, fuck, I did great today. You know, it, it's like this is just like the job is constant the job is awake and dreaming the job is is created mm -hmm. so there are, there aren't those step overs and gaps there aren't those in between times like with other jobs i assume because i've never had another job <laughs> so i don't know for real you know but i assume with 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 anybody else's job, it there it must feel like there's a point, you know, like you, you you start here and you end up here, and with an encapsulated career, you know, you can see the milestones and and how things, you know, I, this year I get two vacations, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 but it doesn't happen like that with creative people. We're twenty four seven. Yeah. And it's really hard to explain to people. It's really hard to, 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 to have that make any sort of sense, especially when people are assuming that you're just supposed to be like fucking thrilled. You know, you, you, this guy doing this. And you're just like, yeah, I'm this guy that, you know, has to do this, 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 and this to be able to do that. And then to be able to do that, I have to facilitate it for this person and that person and everything else. And, and, I don't know. I guess that's different. Being here at FetishCon, I'm going to talk about your fetish photography and okay. just the way you're able to capture the images and the souls of the models that you get to work with. I'm always en enamored when Mistress Natalie from New York posts one of your images, and it, yeah. I just go, oh my God, this is you. I, all right. I'll... Um me and Nat go way back. Okay. I've bring, been, that, bring that up so we can hear you. <laughs> I, I've been working with her for a really long time. Mm -hmm. She's one of the most amazing people that I, that I get to share life with. Um, she's so funny because she's so, like, she knows exactly what she wants to do and how she wants to do it and where she wants me to stand and and then and then I get it right and then she totally just like her whole that all just melts away and then and then and it's like she remembers that I'm good at what I do mm -hmm. you know what I mean it's like no look and it's just like oh, oh. and then it, then it's like a whole different thing you know when I show up she you know mm -hmm. and then 20 minutes in we're just old friends again and we get to hang out because and that's why the work now with her is so good mm -hmm. because we're old friends now and, and we get to hang out. Those are the best clients. Mm -hmm. Those are the best people that I've gotten to get to know, you know, the people who I, who I really get to spend time with and make really beautiful, you know, portfolios of, not mm -hmm. just, you know, this photo shoot or that photo shoot. I'm good at those too, you know, the, <laughs> the quick things and the, you know, I'm good at seeing things, you know, like right off and right away. But man, it's so much better when you already have that comfort level with someone and you go back into another shoot with them and it just falls right into place. In this podcast, we talk so much about how people make connections, how doms make connections with subs, how you meet a new person and you know instantly how you can get to where you need to go to. There's a first instinct. Is there a first instinct with you when you meet a new client? I don't think it necessarily has to do with just the the business and client mm -hmm. thing. It there's there's very much a, a there's a string between people, mm -hmm. and you follow along that string your whole life, mm -hmm. right? You start it way over here and you're going to end up some way, somewhere, hopefully way over there. But you're following that string, whether you realize it or not, because we made up time. We made it up. All of our time is based on on our experience on the earth. 60 minutes in an hour, 12 hours 
in a half a day, 24 hours in a full day. You know, it's, it's how our planet moves in the solar system. So all of our time is based on our planet. So it doesn't work the same way everywhere else. Mm -hmm. All right. You get away from the planet. You get you get far enough ahead of things in your own mind that you're not really thinking about that timeline. Well, then your timeline is actually really incredibly short in a grander scheme of the idea of time. So that string is a very short string. And of course, you know where all of it's supposed to go because time's only this big. Mm -hmm. So you only have that much time. And on that string, you'll meet people who are supposed to be there because they're following along a string of their own that connects between everyone and your life starts here, ends there, and you meet there. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. Sometimes that's the most amazing experience that you can have with a person for a month, mm -hmm. for a year, you know, for, for a, maybe a good chunk of time. And it's those little stop-offs where life lives. Mm -hmm. And as you get to those points with each of these individual people, with each of these moments that are supposed to happen, mm -hmm. then you have a life. And I've been very lucky to meet a lot of those wonderful people along that string. I've been very fortunate to be able to say, wow, I was really supposed to meet that person mm -hmm. then, and then this happened. And then I meet this person there, and then this happened. All of these biggest successes and the things that I hold you know, value to in my own you know, resume and portfolio, well, all of those things happened because of very specific particular people that helped me get into the right situation at the right time and then that's how this happened mm -hmm. and this person had a connection here and then it ended up over here and then that's how that happened well that's all that string empowering designs for fetish models doms sex workers or anyone else who needs to be seen as their authentic selves Visit the What Women Want podcast store at Kingster Merch on Etsy to see those and other wonderful designs for all Kingsters. Now, back to the show and more with our guests on What Women and Other Wonderful Humans Want. I teach a course called Kindness and Other Kinks. Mm. I taught it here mm. at FetishCon. And one of the things I discuss in it is how we see ourselves. In the mirror, everything is distorted because it is the opposite Everything way. is backwards. Then there is the camera view, which is how everyone else sees us. Right, but that always looks wrong to you because the, you're used to the image of yourself in the that's mirror. That's right. When you look at yourself in this, I'm looking at myself going, that's not my face, but mm -hmm. it is my face because I'm just used to seeing it the other way. Exactly. Mirrors fuck with us. Not that video cameras are any better. You hold no credit to me, and I almost <laughs> didn't do this because it was a video, but video cameras fuck with you in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. it, because it, 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 and now that everything that we do has to be live and recorded mm -hmm. and put out there, there's, there's absolutely, there's absolutely no more reason to not just say fuck it this is who I am mm -hmm. because you can't control how your world is put out there anymore yeah there's no way possible to do it yesterday in my class real early on I said it is totally okay to film me because so many things about you know FetishCon, mm -hmm. you know you don't do that sort of thing there's a lot of classes at FetishCon where they don't want you to be you know, yeah, uh, uh, filming things for obvious reasons. You know, it's it's a it's a grown up to grown up thing, not grown up to the world sort mm -hmm. of thing. But I made it a point to say that yesterday because I've kind of 
just accepted it. This is just who I am, and if it's going to be put out there, I don't really have any control over it other than being able to give permission for it. Mm -hmm. Because if that's the way your life is supposed to be cataloged, if that's the things that show up, if that's the slideshow at your funeral, mm. do you have any less amount of control? No. So you might as well get a bunch of stuff out there so at least people have a lot of good stuff to pick from. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the way that I look at it. If you don't worry so much anymore about trying to control that sort of thing, life gets so much easier. And it starts to feel better. In this class, I say that there is a third view which is the camera view of yourself. Okay. How other people see you, but how you're able to accept what they see for yourself. And I think, in mm. some way, that is what you have been able to do with your work, is allow people to see themselves as they really are. Yeah. God, I hope so. And in teaching that, to teach that acceptance of love, the acceptance of who we are, the embracing of these wonderful freaks that we let our flags yeah. fly with, that's what brings us all together here, Scott. Yeah, it really is. This convention especially, just mm -hmm. to stay on the... This convention, especially, you see a lot of the same faces mm -hmm. every year. And you see a lot of people that you've, you've built, you know, relationships with through just, you know, getting to see them every year. It's very true for me. Because I've been coming to this convention since 2007. And... Not only have I gotten to know a lot of people, but I've also, you know, had a lot of people come and go, you know, and those those short shared experiences too, you know, have, have become this this thing that I look forward to every year. That I that I feel bad when I'm missing it, you know, if I ever miss it, you know, because it's it's it, it it feels like there's a gap in my life when I I don't get to spend the weekend in Florida that yeah. year, you know, it's like, this is just a thing and I love it. You know, I, I, I always have, and, and it just kind of sucked me in. And I feel like, I feel like now that hopefully I'm one of the people that some of these people look forward to seeing, because I certainly have a lot of people that I look forward to see every year at the convention. It's a weird sort of unit mm -hmm. and I love it. It's pretty cool. Any interviewer can say, who's your favorite? Any interviewer can say, who is the most difficult? Oh, who God. Who is the one okay. that most surprised you? My friend Jenna is a really interesting character. Um, and I've been working with her for quite some time. And I've watched her life and the progression of it. And, and, and the minute my mind turns on to one particular story, it, it intersects with a thousand other people. And all of that becomes shining stars. And do you want to know who surprised me? Me. I surprised me. Because there are so many situations that, that, that I found myself in that, that, that I got to take pictures of. And I got to get it right. 
and and those are how all of those memories of all of these people are now built so all of these people i hope that i just lived up to the moment for them i hope and in some situations i surprised myself by living past that moment for them getting it so right and I'm very critical about what I do. I'm very critical about art in general. I, I, I you know, especially and not not other people's art, but but you know, anything that I create, I, I I'm very focused about how I want it to be put out there. And and those times, you know, I feel like I always get it right because it's my job to get it right. I have to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're going to be happy and they're going to be thrilled. But those times where I really get it right. It's always surprising. And I don't like to question how it works. You know? Mm -hmm. I don't like to, to, to put much more force to the idea of it other than just knowing that it's there. Um, all of these people that I've got to share that with hmm. they all have their own stories they all have their own posts and things that, that they become and, and my ability to spend that time with them to begin with that's the pictures are public the stories aren't mm -hmm. how about that and that's what I love about interviewing for me is being able to, through words, have that moment, have those moments and have people share theirs. Yeah. And you know what? It's perfect and it's finished and it's controlled and, and I love that. Because once a photograph is done, it's done, right? You're not adding to it. You're not editing it. You're not. You're not. You're not throwing anything else at it at all. It is a finished statement. Mm -hmm. When you pick up a book, the whole fucking story's right there. Mm -hmm. The whole story, like before you even open it, that whole story is inside of that book, mm -hmm. beginning to end, characters, subplots, everything. It's all right there. It only turns into a book when you open it because you can't process it completely just by picking it up mm -hmm. you and we have to read it from beginning to end to experience everything that is already contained in that thing when you pick it up mm -hmm. well that's your fucking life your whole life is right there and everything about it is contained right there but you only have one path to go through it It's amazing you keep bringing up things that really resonate with me because in my class I talk about expectations mm. and anticipations. Expectations are that book that has already been written. Yeah, it's right there. You're holding it, the whole story. Anticipations are moments that haven't been lived yet. Right, because you only follow through time one way. Mm-hmm. So when you approach a shoot I can only imagine that you have anticipations rather than expectations I lose my damn mind until I get something exceptional I'm completely freaking out totally thinking I'm a failure totally thinking there's absolutely no no way that I'm ever going to make this person happy oh my god what the fuck was I thinking getting myself into this sort of shit again mm-hmm until I get it right. And then I love everything about it for the whole rest of the day. And so do they. And so does, you know, the, everything is right with the world. You know, it's like, oh, I got it right again. All right, well, everything else from here, now it's just bonus. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that. I feel like that every day. I feel like that even on days when I don't have a job, if I'm just going to be shooting something for myself or just, you know, just being involved, whatever creative, you know, we're, we're planting corn, you know, whatever. I just like, mm -hmm. it's like when I get it right, then my whole day is cool. Mm 
You know, that was the purpose of, 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 of playing this game for another day. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the, that was the, 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 <laughs> that was the level up, you know, mm -hmm. from, from Saturday to Sunday to Monday, you know, it's like, I'm doing this. So it's like, all right, then I'm cool. You know, the way that time works now, as you get older, you get, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a man of a certain age and, and, we both and are. yeah, we both are. <laughs> and, and, and it, the years get shorter. Oh God, because yes. you focus on milestones and you get through those milestones and then the year ends and, and that, that time between milestones gets shorter and shorter and shorter because it, you have so many other years that you have to think about, all right? Because when you're five and you have to remember five years, well, you remember everything about those mm -hmm. five years and even then it's kind of shady, you know, when you're young. The, the, the four years that you spend in high school are 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 burned in your brain mm -hmm. you know you remember everything about it you remember all the highlights all the sorrows all the you know late night morrissey songs you know <laughs> it, it's you remember all of that shit because you were only 16 to 18 years old at that point you didn't have all of these other memories that you had to deal with and these were very important things that happened when you still could remember all of them Ask anybody who's my age about their 30s and they'll tell you like three things. Their 30s, you know, like the whole decade between 30 and 39. I can tell you like three things about my 30s. You know, I can talk about specific stories if I think about it, but it, I'm not associating any of it because all of that shit goes away. So time for us moves much faster. Because mm -hmm. you're 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 just gathering more shit on top of the incredibly huge pile mm -hmm. of stuff you know, you know. So it goes quickly, and that's when you have tent poles in your day. It's like, well, I did good today. Well, then it makes it easier for you to deal with the progression of forward moving mm -hmm. time. So there you go. That's that's why. And if it made complete sense, please <laughs> like and subscribe now because we've impressed you so much. <laughs> I want to finish on my favorite topic, which is love. The distance between your lens and the model may be inches, may be feet, may be yards, may be a longer distance. But there's love that travels between those two distances, I believe, because you have a love for what you're shooting, and they have a trust and love in you that allows you to create these beautiful images. Do you feel that love? When I get it right, I feel like I fall in love with every one of them. When I get it right, I have the image that I am going to remember about them. That image is who they always are to me. There's a lot of experiences that you have in your life. Not everything is shared with everyone. People have different segments of their life. Mm -hmm. That guy that you walked past on the street, that could be the only time that you ever interact with that guy ever. So if you remember him, you're gonna remember him the way he looked right there on the street, right? That's your image of that person. The, the outstanding moments in people's lives are the way that we remember each other. The things that resonate most in our brain. You know, it's like I remember, you know, grandpa from the wedding, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a celebration. And, and maybe there's a picture of grandpa mm -hmm. from the wedding that you, that you have. And maybe what you're remembering is not grandpa at the wedding, but that picture of grandpa at the wedding. I get to make that with the people that 
I, I work with. And sometimes that's all you, that's all I get. A mm -hmm. lot of times that's all I get. But if it's really good, then that's not only how I'm going to remember them, but how they're going to remember me. That's going to be the, what they think of when they think of me. And that is a lot like falling in love. I can't think of a better way to end this interview. Well, there you go. <laughs> Scott, I have to tell you, um, I didn't know what to expect when we talked other than I was sitting next to somebody who captures moments and I love moments. I love to be in the moment. And this is a memory I'm not going to forget. All right. Well, cool. Good. I'm glad. I'm <laughs> you, glad. You did I'm this one right. <laughs> I, 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 I get asked to do podcasts. I've done a lot of podcasts. I've done my own podcast for a little while. You know, and, and, and it's, it's sometimes when I just talk, I'm processing as I'm going and, and, it, and, it, and it works. All right. Sometimes I'm supposed to be talking about something. The best times that I do these is when I don't have any expectation of either. You know, we just, like, I didn't have any time to think no. about this at all. You, you asked me about it. I came, I sat down, and here we are. You have this now. And, and that, I feel like in this moment, that was the best possible way to make that happen. I thank you so very, You're very, very much. You're very welcome. Thank Actually, you very no, much. For, may, for, may I just say thank you? <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you very much for, for having me, and I really appreciate this. And, and uh, it, it, this is one of them, their moments, right? Exactly. Rock and roll. Special thanks to Scott Church. I am John, also known as Hi There, Catsuit. I hope I've earned the privilege of your time, and I remind you to always remember consent and to love each other always. What women and other wonderful humans want connects with you. Join us on Twitter at What Women Want P1, on Instagram at What Women Want Podcast, and for our kinky friends on FetLife at WWW Podcast. This has been a presentation of Dating Kinky, built by kinksters for kinksters, poly, queer, trans folk, and anyone not quite vanilla, and it's free. We are proud to be the official podcast of FetishCon, and we want you to join us in St. Petersburg, Florida, August 8th through 11th, 2024. The trade show brings together models, producers, industry leaders, and fans from all over the world, and brings you great classes in kink or how to become an industry professional. You can get all the details at fetishcon.com.